In June 1960, when a 57-year-old Angami Naga arrived in London, the British security officials detained him immediately. How come you can travel to London without a valid passport? A security official asked. To which the man replied promptly, the same way you came to my country without any passport. That was Angami Zapu Faizo, a fierce Naga rebel leader remembered as the father of the Nagas. Faizo waged a war against the Union of India in the hope of forming an independent Naga nation by integrating 3.5 million Nagas since the 1950s and their territories scattered across India's northeast and neighboring Burma, present-day Myanmar. At a time when India was on the verge of getting independence and it started solidifying its boundaries, Faizo first requested Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru to not include Naga Hills and its surrounding areas, sandwiched between the windswept mountains of Burma and northeast India, into the Union. Faizo was representing the Naga National Council, NNC, the apex Naga political organization formed in 1946. Nehru, who until then had ensured autonomy of the hills, declined Faizo's request. Seeking self-rule, the NNC had also announced on August 14, 1947 the Naga independence. In 1951, it also held a Naga plebiscite in Kohima to assert their demand for a free, independent Naga nation, in which 99.9% .9 of Nagas who voted chose a sovereign Nagaland. The message was to leave the Nagas, an isolated hill tribe believed to have migrated from China from around the 10th century and settled in Myanmar and northeastern part of India, on their own. However, the government of India did not recognize the plebiscite. Later Faizo formed the Underground Federal Government of Nagaland, FNG, and a Naga Federal Army, NFA, to continue with his separatist movement. Faizo fled the Naga Hills in 1956 following the advice of other Naga leaders when Nehru sent over 1,000 Indian forces to sabotage the growing separatist movements in the hills. He first fled to East Pakistan, now Bangladesh, and then to Geneva. He ended up living in exile in Britain for the rest of his life while trying to garner international support for a Nagalim. Meanwhile, the government of India enacted the Armed Forces, Special Powers, Act, 1958 to give security forces more power to contain the Naga insurgency. In 1963, the state of Nagaland was formed as the 16th state of independent India. Brigadier, R.E.T.D., Dr. S.P. Sinha, in his book, Lost Opportunities, wrote, The new state of Nagaland was formed to take the wind out of rebels' demand for independence. He wrote that despite opposition from government of Assam and the Intelligence Bureau, I.B., Nehru had to accept the proposal, ostensibly because, the Chinese were getting extremely belligerent, and confrontation in NIFA, Northeast Frontier Agency, had already taken place. The fear of a possible china pak nexus was ever-present and it was considered prudent to tackle the volatile internal situation at the earliest. Faizo could never return to the Naga Hills, and in 1990, he died in London. Since then, the movement for a separate country for the Nagas has been helmed by the National Socialist Council of Nagaland, a breakaway faction of NNC. In 1980, five years after the Shillong Accord was signed between NNC and Government of India where it accepted the Indian Constitution, following sustained military pressure from the Indian government, the Naga National Socialist Council broke away from the NNC. Autonomy versus sovereignty, take what you have got so far, said Dr. S. C. Jameer, 90, the five-time chief minister of Nagaland, and the lone surviving signatory of the 16-point agreement between Naga People's Convention and Government of India in 1960 that led to the formation of Nagaland as the 16th state of Indian Union. He told Outlook, I want to tell those people, fighting for an independent nation, that whatever you have sacrificed, we appreciate. But whatever possible under the present circumstances, whatever is drawn up, let's be proud of that. Tell the Naga people that we have tried for so many years, but this is the only possible thing which is available today under the present political environment. Jameer, who met the Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi and Home Minister Ahmed Shah in May, said, the Home Minister and the Prime Minister both are very clear that they will not agree on separate flag and constitution. In fact, the Naga people also want autonomy incorporated in the constitution. My only suggestion is that whatever is decided so far should be put in action. You cannot keep lingering to the issue for so many decades. Notably, Jameer, who has survived several attacks by separatist rebels during his ten years as chief minister of the state, is still criticized for signing the 16-point agreement. The Naga Hoho, the apex tribal Naga body, whose origin dates back to India's independence, feels that two separate agreements are creating confusion among the people of Nagaland. 
Talking to Outlook, K. L. U. and Dong, General Secretary of Nagahoho, said, when the framework agreement was signed, people were given with a ray of hope that now there will be a situation where the Nagas will have a better life. But that expectation, the joy did not last long. Instead of strengthening the framework agreement by bringing all the groups together which is inclusive in nature, the government of India decided to sign another agreement which is called as agreed position. When this agreement came in, this gave a shock to all the Nagas. This led the entire Naga people into a very confused stage. He also said that Naga Hoho and other civil organizations have been insisting on the government of India, through its interlocutor, to make sure that the Naga political dialogue and the outcome should be inclusive. He said, it cannot be exclusive. It has to be inclusive of all the Naga political groups from all the Naga areas scattered across boundaries. According to Krome, Naga groups like National Socialist Council of Nagaland IM should keep negotiating peace as it is the only solution. He added, nobody wants to go back to pre-ceasefire situation. So we say keep talking and find a solution which is honorable for both the parties.